Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith and Flower. If you're new here, my name is Robin, and in today's video, I am going to be continuing the conversation on a video that I did very recently on frugal money-saving tips. So this seemed to really resonate with a lot of you, and I think there's more to say about it. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit more in today's video. In our culture today, being frugal isn't really celebrated. I think that minimalism is having a moment, and so there are more people thinking along those lines. But we can all benefit from at least considering some ideas about ways to live our life in a more frugal way. My grandparents grew up or were young adults during the Great Depression, and this really shaped their views and their values. I wanted to explore that a little bit more. I've actually talked a little bit about my conversations with one of my grandmothers in particular, and I have learned so much from her. She's no longer with us, but she was born in 1913, and so therefore was a young adult during the Great Depression. She had to make choices in her life that were different from her parents' generation. Her her views and the way she lived her life really shaped my parents' generation. And I think that my generation has gone very far from that. And I think that we can benefit from exploring a lot of those ideas and approaches to the way we live our lives. And I'm applying it specifically to homemaking today. So I actually did an internet search recently. I just wanted to get a list of things that someone from the Great Depression era would do as far as running their household. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. A lot of these things I actually already do. And some of that is an influence of my grandmother and some of it's the influence of my husband who is a sort of naturally frugal person. And so I have been able to take a lot of these things and incorporate them into the way we run our home. Because of that, we have been able to save quite a lot of money. We've been able to live debt free. And I just think that putting these things out there and starting this conversation could be really beneficial to the next generation. So let's get started. So I've compiled this list from things that I found on the internet and I added some that we do as well. And I'm going to just quickly go through them and tell you what we do, if we do this or not, if we're going to change what we're doing. And you let me know down in the comments what you think as well. Some of these things pertain to modern technology and obviously our grandparents didn't have to worry about that, but I trying to think what would my grandmother do when I talk about those things. So let's get started. Stop eating out. We do this. I talked about this in my previous video and I will have that linked in the cards above if you wanna know more about our philosophy on eating out. But we basically really limit that and we make it more of a special occasion, not an everyday thing and not sort of a last minute thing when I haven't meal planned properly. And that has saved us a ton of money. Cook from scratch. And this is something that I enjoy doing and it does take more time, but I find is really worthwhile for many reasons. And I have a whole playlist of cooking and baking videos that you guys can check out if you are looking for new recipes or ways for cooking from scratch. We try to eliminate you know, those convenience type items that you buy at the store because those are very pricey. And if you're willing to put in just a little bit of extra time, you can make meals that are even better for less buy the whole chicken. Okay, so this is something that I don't do regularly, but I do think that there is a lot of wisdom in that. When you buy a whole chicken at the store, you are able to get that at a much cheaper price than if you buy the package of the different parts, so wings or breasts or whatever. There is a convenience element to that, so I don't always do it, but I agree with it, and because it's now on my radar a little bit more, I will be trying to do that a little more. Don't waste food. And this is huge. I mean, I actually know people who refuse to eat leftovers and I don't really get it. My family loves leftovers. I try to take some of what I'm cooking and reinvent it in a new way. But lots of times a dish like say curry for instance, or a stew, is even better the next day or a couple of days later. And you can freeze those leftovers if you don't like having meals on repeat. But I just don't get why people wouldn't eat leftovers. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that. Buy food in bulk. 
This is something that we did a lot more when our boys were younger and they were sort of, you know, eating us out of house and home. <laughs> it made sense to shop at stores like Sam's Club or Costco, places like that, to save money on bulk items. And I think it depends on your family size. It's not always the most frugal route, but I definitely agree with it if you have a large family or kids at home that eat a lot and you're able to go through that inventory, that's a great way to go batch cook. I have done this. I don't do it every single week, but I do think it's a great way to save money. It's a good way to put those bulk items to use. And I do have some videos on that that you guys can check out. I'll have them linked down in the description box. Have a baking day. I love this idea. I don't do this. I used to do it a little more when my kids were younger. I haven't set aside the time for it is basically what it is. But my grandmother definitely did this, especially when she was growing up. They had different days of the week for different household chores and one of them definitely was baking day. It just makes sense when you have the oven hot to just go ahead and bake several things. If you have ample freezer storage, a lot of baked items freeze really well. And it's healthier too than buying those items at the grocery store and it will save you a lot of money. Learn how to preserve food. And I think this goes hand in hand with grow your own food. And again, this is something that we did when our kids were a little younger. We had more yard space and we had quite a large vegetable garden. So I preserved the things that we grew. We also had the fortune of having blackberries on our property. So every year I picked all the blackberries and made blackberry preserves. And we enjoyed those throughout the winter months. I think that is a wonderful way to save money. I know that that's something not everybody can do, but if it's something that interests you, you might want to explore it a little more. Stock your pantry and freezer. So I have a whole playlist on our prepper pantry, <laughs> so you can get more information about what we do by checking out those videos and I'll have a link below. But basically it enables us to buy things when they're on sale and buy several of them. So we can either freeze them for later or store them in our pantry for later and we were able to get that sale price. So if I only bought what I needed for the week, I would not be able to take advantage of those prices and so that's a really great way to save some money. Eat breakfast at home. Now this is something that I always do. <laughs> I don't recall ever eating out for breakfast unless we were traveling or something like that. I know for people who are commuting to work back and forth, this is tremendously convenient, but it is very costly. So if you can just, you know, wake up an extra five or 10 minutes early to make it possible to eat at home, you will save a lot of money. And going along with that would be always making your own coffee. <laughs> I know that's a treat that a lot of people really like to indulge in. And I would say, if that's something that really matters to you, at least cut back <laughs> and maybe go only once a week or so because that money each day that you spend can really add up. Pack your lunch. <laughs> this goes along with the last one. If you can spend a little bit of extra time the night before or the morning before you leave for work or school to pack your lunch, not only will you save money, but you will be eating a lot healthier as well. Another thing that wasn't on the list that I saw, but that we did, especially when our kids were younger, was when we had friends over, we did it potluck style. So that makes it easy to entertain and have fun with your friends without having to spend a lot of money in the process. And we actually really enjoyed that. We had a great time with our friends doing that. And I learned a lot of new recipes and things. There were just lots of bonuses and upsides to doing that. So now I wanna get into some things that are around the house, maybe not necessarily food related, although this first one could definitely apply, and that's use things up. So in the kitchen, for example, if you have a little mustard at the bottom of the jar, use that to make a salad dressing. You can even mix it up right in that same jar to get all of it out. And of course, in the bathroom, add a little bit of water to that tiny bit of shampoo <laughs> that's left in the bottle and use it up before you start a new bottle. Just think about that in all areas that you can and over time it will save you lots of money. 
learn how to make simple repairs. So I know that sometimes you need to bring in the professionals, but when you have a small job, there are lots of resources that are available to you, even right here on YouTube, that can help you learn how to make small repairs. So for instance, if your toilet needs a repair, or if your car needs a small adjustment or repair, we have done painting and refinishing furniture. There are just loads of things that you can do yourself and save yourself a lot of money. Making do with what you have. This was something that I know my grandparents did and we have tried to do as well. So when considering buying a new item, we think about, is there something that we already own that will get the job done? Or for example, we have a car that is almost 18 years old. It works fine. There's no need for us to get another one. And so we can avoid making purchases by making do with what we already have. Also, be happy with what you have. I know for me, just caring for our home definitely instills a sense of gratitude for everything that we have been blessed with. I appreciate our home, and right now we live in a home that's very different from the one that we lived in when we were first married. That was a very modest home, but every time I did something to care for it, it just elevated that sense of gratitude. And you can be grateful and content no matter where you live, so be grateful for what you have borrowing instead of buying so we do this for instance with our library we can get books dvds uh, audiobooks all sorts of things from there so we've pretty much eliminated buying all of those things because we can borrow them but also i know in my grandparents generation and we've gotten away from that now is borrowing from neighbors so instead of making a trip to the grocery store when you're out of you know one or two eggs or a cup of sugar we could go back to borrowing from our neighbors we used to have a neighbor that was a handyman and was very generous with lending out tools so that we didn't have to buy something that we only needed for one job. And that said, if you are going to start borrowing with your neighbors, make sure that you're really respectful. I know my grandparents would never return an item that wasn't in at least as good of a condition as when they borrowed it or better. So if you break something, you replace it and you just are very respectful. That's a whole nother subject I could make a whole nother video on, right? <laughs> buy used items. And I'm really happy to say I see a lot of that on YouTube, especially people that thrift items. And I haven't done that as much as I probably should. And I've been rewarded greatly whenever I've done it. So that's something that I'm looking to do more. But instead, we often will buy very high quality new items and use them up. So I think either way, you just want to make sure that you are getting the most from the items that you buy and that you're not being wasteful. Use reusable products instead of disposable. This is something that's also taking off. I think a lot more people are doing it and my grandparents definitely did. We actually used cloth diapers when our boys were babies as much as we possibly could. I tried to use things like mason jars over you know, disposable plastic bags. We use our own grocery bags at the grocery store. So there are tons of ways to do that. Along with that, save containers and reuse them again. I know my grandmother did that. Except hand-me-downs, things like clothes and furniture, you can thrift them, or if you know someone who is willing to pass them on to you, be open to that. I think that's a great idea. As a matter of fact, our son is getting married in November, and they were able to get some furniture from my parents, and they're really happy with that, and we're really glad to see that they were open to that. I think that's wonderful. Buy classic clothes styles. So I do try to do this. And again, I have a playlist on my 10 item wardrobe where I show you how I put together a wardrobe each season. And a lot of that is shopped from my own closet. And I try to curate a wardrobe so that over time I can have these pieces that are gonna come back year after year, season after season. And so check those out. I'll have them in the description box wear an apron. I do that. <laughs> I can be a messy cook and a messy eater. So I try to wear an apron to protect my clothes. And that way I don't have to wash my clothes every single time if they aren't otherwise dirty. And that saves money in a couple of different ways. I'm not washing clothes as often. And so I'm not using up as much water and energy and my clothes last longer. So I don't have to buy new clothes as often. Line dry clothes. 
This is something that my grandparents did and something that isn't even always possible for us anymore. In the home where we lived before, we had enough property and you know, no HOA requirements. Those are you know, homeowners association requirements that some neighborhoods here in the United States have that forbid you from you know, having close lines outside. I know that probably sounds really strange to those of you that are outside the United States or those of you that live in more rural areas in the United States, but that is a reason why people don't line dry their clothes. But I have found a way to do that inside and I dry at least 50% of our clothes that way. And there's a couple of ways that saves money. Again, I have less energy cost from running our dryer and it makes our clothes last longer, which saves money too. Be willing to repair your shoes. You know, this is something that I think about lots of times, my grandparents' generation compared to ours. And so they were always willing to repair things. I know my grandmother even showed me a little advertisement for someone who would mend women's stockings. So they would never consider buying something new when they could repair what they already have. And shoes are a pretty easy one to do. If you have a nice quality pair of shoes and they get worn out, lots of times the only thing they need is a new sole or maybe a new heel we do that and i would encourage you to do it too look for free entertainment so we don't always need to go out to the movies and you know go out to restaurants and do things outside of the home that cost money there are loads of ways to look for free entertainment and that's something that we've enjoyed doing as a family as well so we like outdoor activities we like to hike and bike and explore our community in ways that doesn't cost anything so look into that i talked about it a little bit more in my previous video so check that out don't use credit save for the things that you want this is huge my grandparents never would have considered buying on credit they looked at that as a matter of pride i guess they wouldn't want to appear to need credit they would save for what they needed and that has drastically changed in our culture today but i think there's so much wisdom in that I think that we're more appreciative of things that we've had to work to save for and therefore we take better care of them that's a big bonus and of course it saves you money because you need to look at the interest rates that you're paying whenever you consider buying something on credit that is part of the price and so you are not saving money by getting it earlier definitely don't buy on credit whenever possible layer up in the winter i love this one we do this in our home we keep the temperature as low as possible in the winter time and as high as possible in the summertime to save on energy bills it's just part of living through the different seasons so i don't mind being a little colder in the winter time i just throw on an extra layer or two until i feel comfortable and that is definitely something that my grandmother would have done cut the cable and landline enough said everybody knows if you have a cell phone you don't need a landline and you don't need cable when you have streaming services available look for ways to save energy i know you guys remember your grandparents or your parents fussing at you about leaving lights on when you're not in the room and things like that those things are valuable that energy cost adds up and so when you think frugally about those things you can save yourself a lot of money make it yourself this is something that I love. I have several ways that I can apply this to homemaking. So I do make some of my own cleaners, even my own laundry detergent. I'll have some information linked below about that. Making your own food is part of that too. And I know you guys have tons of ideas, so leave those down in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. Use less. So when you think about things like water for example that costs us money generally unless you have a well but even if you have a well it just makes sense to conserve whenever you can so look around see where you can be conserving in any area of your home again let me know how you do that down in the comments exercise for free I know that my grandparents never in a million years would have considered a gym membership. And I challenge you to give up your gym membership and look for ways that you can do that for free. Leave some comments down below on ways that you've done that. We love to do outdoor activities, as I said, and we also work out every day just using an exercise DVD. And there are tons on the market. You can find one that you like and that suits your needs without having to go to the gym. 
print on both sides of the paper. So <laughs> before doing that, I would say go paperless as much as possible. But whenever you do need to print something out, flip the paper over and print on the other side. This is something that my husband does all the time and I do it now too. It just saves paper and then saves money consolidate trips on errand day. So first of all, get an errand day. <laughs> Try to do as many things as you can when you are already out. That way you will save money on gas and you're also gonna save a lot of time. Take in borders. Now this is something that we have not done, but this was something that was done very often back in the Great Depression out of necessity. And I love that I'm seeing it more and more today. We're all familiar with Airbnb. If that is an option for your family, then it is something that you can take advantage of and actually earn money for your family. Avoid driving when possible. So of course that depends on where you live in large part, but if you have access to public transportation, consider using that more. Consider carpooling or just look for ways that you can reduce driving. Like I said before, consolidate your errands and just try to use your car a little less. Use a hot water bottle in the winter time. <laughs> so this is very old fashioned thinking and you know, not many people do it today, but our family actually uses these little cloth bags that are filled with dried corn that we heat in the microwave. And then when it's cold in the winter time, we stick one in our bed to warm up our bed. And that way we can keep the thermostat really low. I know this probably sounds crazy to some of you, but it really works. It helps us to keep our energy costs down and it's just, it's kind of cozy and nice. And that is something that my grandmother definitely did and would still do. Reuse wrapping paper. So let me know how many of you have grandmothers that would always, you know, carefully open each gift and fold the wrapping paper and save it for later. I used to think that was crazy and it would sort of drive me crazy, but now I totally get it. I think that's great. And actually we don't use a lot of wrapping paper. We use those gift bags and I definitely reuse those. Collect rainwater. I think this is such a great idea and one that we haven't yet implemented, but we are definitely looking into because it's a great way to save the water that comes to you for free and use it around your yard to water your plants or whatever. I think it's great for the environment and definitely good for your budget. That is the end of my list for today. It is by no means an exhaustive list, so I can't wait to hear what you guys add to it down in the comments. So as you can see, we do a lot of these things and I'm going to be looking into doing some of the ones that we aren't already doing. Living this way has allowed our family to live debt free, but also has allowed us to save for the things that really matter. So for me, it's really just a more sensible way of living. It's a more intentional way of spending our money so that we can devote our money to the things that really matter instead of frittering it away mindlessly. So it's intentional. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and don't leave without subscribing. We would love to have you join our Faith and Flower community. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, have a wonderful week.